Hello, welcome back. This is part 22 of Let's Play Dark Souls. Um, now again, always trying to find new and unique shots. <laughs> Look at the little ring holder there on the bonfire. Um, we just finished up the, the archives, thankfully. <laughs> Painfully had to get the Avalyn there. Um, getting my souls was a bit of a annoyance too, <laughs> by the way, which I might uh, throw in a little bit of a clip at the end as far as exactly how it happened. but. Basically, I had to use a Ring of Sacrifice because getting back to... My souls were by the treasure chest, so I had to do the same jump again. And then um, getting back was not going to happen, so... <laughs> I had to use my Ring of Sacrifice. don't think we're going to use it again. So, finally found a use for it. Um, I, oh, I should probably spend my souls, I just realized. I was uh, specifically waiting to do that on camera. Um, oh, let's uh, not forget, by the way. Always remember to repair your equipment. So, it's super cheap. All you have to take is just less than 100 souls each usually, but remember to do it before your stuff breaks. Ooh, our Elite Knight Helmet was uh, not even taking that much damage well. So yeah, you can you can probably go your whole game without ever repairing your stuff and you'll be fine, but it's good good practice to do it. Um, so with our remaining souls, we will continue getting our intelligence higher because we are one smart undead. So. Going back this way, we do have one more thing to take care of before we press onwards. And ooh, those bolts that equipped are hanging out of my cape there. And oh god, I also don't have my wolf ring equipped. So yeah, sorry guys, should have prepared all this beforehand. But you know what? I like to keep it real, you know. <laughs> Show you all the struggle. So in here we're gonna find our buddy Big Hat Logan, here in the dark, just reading about spells. Hello there, I was expecting you. This place is truly magnificent, more than expected even. As promised, I shall share the new sorceries with you, and the secret of Seath's immortality. So yeah, now we can buy the... Uh, he'll still sell his things that we didn't buy yet, but he's also going to sell the final tier of spells, which are the crystal spells. Um, these, of course, require the most intelligence, but they uh, do the most damage. Um, this one in particular is pretty nasty. Um, it's like the homing soul mass, which I kind of talked about, except these ones are crystals, so they'll just hurt more, you know, you want crystals up, up in your eyes, and in all your wounds, it's gonna hurt. So, let's see what else he has to say. Ah, the secret of Seath's immortality. If you have fought him and were imprisoned, you must know that Seath is a true undead, different from ourselves. His wounds close promptly. And no mortal blow affects him, granting true insulation from death. His wounds close promptly, and no mortal blow affects him, granting true insulation from death. It is an effect of the primordial crystal, a sacred treasure pillaged by Seath when he turned upon the ancient dragons. So only by destroying the primordial crystal can you so much as scratch his hide. And it so happens. The primordial crystal is in the inner garden of these very archives, the Crystal Forest. So, uh, yeah, um, I suppose I probably should have mentioned that. Farewell. That um, Seath is technically kind of immortal at the moment, although, you know, like, big, large quotations, bold font around immortal. Um, you know, the dragons are naturally immortal, and... Um, Part of that is the Primordial Crystal, which I don't know if we even like get to learn much about it as far as exactly what it is about it that makes it so immortal. But uh, Seath, he stole it from the dragons. That's part of why Gwyn and friends were able to defeat them. And um, he used it to make himself sort of um, in this kind of immortal state. Um, again, like it's not true immortal, like a proper dragon. And uh, ooh, there's a gold crystal um, column, so we'll be taking that thing out shortly. Um, all throughout this forest, by the way, we're gonna find a lot of the crystal golems, and I think so. They're gonna just like glare at us, but most of them we can just ignore, which is exactly what we're gonna do. Um, obviously, this guy we can't because he's uh, caught onto us and our interest in that item. But they're gonna go down pretty easily. Just gotta be careful, because like most enemies, one is fine, but when you got a whole bunch of them on you, uh, you're not gonna have as fun of a time. Um, now it looks like, it might look like, you know, some of them are guarding stuff, but 
There's not. There's a, there's a few items that we want to pick up here. Most of them are just going to be blue type night chunks, so don't actually care about those. Um, but there is. Ooh, watch out for that. Please. Oh, never mind. Oh, no, yeah, he kind of did. Where, like, he'll shoot out crystals in the ground. Oh, good uppercut. Ah. That could have been bad. Oh, a little short, buddy. Oh, and our wolf ring. That's not enough there. So right here, we're going to find what looks like our buddy, but actually isn't. If you notice the sword, it's a little different. So let's see what they have to say. It was you who rescued me. Why, thank you. I am Vigeland of Katarina. I don't know how I ended up in that crystal. It wasn't terrible in there, but I could hardly move. I must think of some way to repay you. So yes, this is um, Sealand, if I remember, I could have, Sealand, right? <laughs> I think so. God, not my memory, and I'm, I'm so bad with memes, even in real life. Um, but anyway, this is um, not Siegmeier, as you can tell. This is a woman, and again, this kind of goes back into Seath and his obsession with maidens. And um, that actually kind of goes back to uh, the princess we rescued as well. If you remember, she was in a crystal golem, and uh, I guess that's where Seath puts the woman he's interested in. So, I don't know, we don't get too much information exactly, but... You can sort of deduce it, right? The two we rescued were out of the crystal golems were women, so Seath woman. Yeah, yeah. Experiments, Pisakas, nasty, dark souls. Ah. Oh, have you seen my father? You wouldn't miss him. A suit of armor just like mine. My goodness. I knew he was here somewhere. Well then, now I must find him. Thanks again, truly. Oh, if I just stay put and keep out of trouble. So yes, this is actually Siegmeier's daughter. Yeah, she um she's on a quest. Her quest is to find her daddy, who is sort of just ran off in seek of adventure, right? So fortunately, that does make Siegmeier a little less cool. You know, he's uh, sure he's off grand adventuring, but he's uh, you know skipping out on his family. Not cool, Siegmeier. And yeah, that's all she's gonna say. So we're done with her, right? She's gonna go off, and we'll we'll see her again, but not quite yet. Um, there is. One more item in this area that I want to get, and I'm hoping to be done with this whole place in this episode, so I don't want to dilly daddle too much. But okay, right there. This is the last thing we need here. We're gonna find the crystal armor, which is what that um, that chump who we killed right before we fought Seath the first time was wearing. So you know, if you want to dress up as him, you can wear it. And I can't speak exactly off the top of my head for how good the armor is. Um, but it's probably like decent heavy armor. Uh, so yeah, these guys uh, are gonna chase us, and we wanna be really careful because okay, no, we can't get in. I guess that's not the entrance. Or, oh god, what, what is going on? That should be the entrance, right? Oh, maybe it's over here. Okay, never mind. <laughs> so come this way, and once you step into the caves, the um, color and mood is gonna change. Of course, this is the Crystal Cave. Um, you know, you can probably wonder why it's called that. Uh, here we're gonna find. So these golems, it's very hard to tell, but they're kind of a more darker blue. They're gonna be a little bit tougher than the normal ones we fight. So okay, yeah, we got the whole squad coming. Now you wanna be careful because the gimmick in this area is a really annoying gimmick. Um, as you can see here, we can even though there's nothing. Here, we're still able to walk on it because there's a bunch of invisible floors here. Oh, oh no, no! Okay. There's a lot of that too, where just things look fine and then you'll start slipping. Uh, found a bit of humanity there. Um, I think, yeah, so we would have just fallen and been fine, but you're gonna see how annoying that whole mechanic is in a second here. Uh, there are some butterflies here, which are gonna just ignore you, so unless you wanna redo the Moonlight Butterfly flight, but without. Oh god, they're still chasing me. Uh, without your help from the Magician Lady. Um, you can do that here, and if you want to farm for uh, blue type knight slabs, you're gonna have to do that here as well. Um, believe that. So, okay, this is when it gets kind of dicey. Um, this is actually a developer method message to kind of give you a hint. But this first one's not too bad because they have snowflakes or crystal flakes falling to make it a little easier. But this is also kind of why they give you the uh, those prism stones because they're very helpful here to sort of like feel out where the path is. This is also a very sketchy fight, by the way. And, okay, I might have been wrong. 
I think those other golems were normal, but this one here looks a little tougher as you can see. It's a little thicker as well. Ooh. Oh, yeah, watch out for that attack. Oh god. Alright, one more hit. And we go. Okay, so I'm making our way down. Um, ooh, yeah, because, because as you can see there, we'll start slipping if we're, if we're, if we're not careful. Um, okay, it's another butterfly. Don't want to fight him just yet. Uh, so, okay, if we go here, I believe if we drop down, we're safe. Yep, and then here we're going to find a nice jackpot of crystal lizards. So just go ahead and get all that upgrade armor. I think I might have missed one as well. So let me quickly, quickly load. See if we can get them. I want to get all that loot. Um, and yes, that was right. So let's kill him and get ourselves some Twinkling Titanite, which we don't need anymore. Although, we might need some. So anyway, up this way, uh, see over there in the distance there's that item. That's the only blue Titanite slab you can find, just like, in the world. Um, if you're going for a plus 15 magic weapon, or either plus 10 magic or a plus 5 enchanted, you're going to need to get that. Um, we're not, and I'm not going to actually demonstrate it because this right here is probably the worst part with this whole um, invisible floor puzzle. Like, the only ones that we have to deal with are going to be uh, just like sort of straight shots, and like I'm, I mostly know where they are at this point. Whereas that is li literally just like an invisible maze. <laughs> you have to just take it step by step, drop in prism stones, or just learn the whole layout. Um, now, I am going to drop down and grab this item real quick, which is just a chunk we didn't need. And I'm going to make my way back up. Here, I think, is the way back. Yep. And, oh god. See, this is when it gets really sketchy. Okay, okay, okay. I think it's this way. Yeah, I almost went the other way. <laughs> oh god. Yeah, I almost went the other way. Easy there, buddy. Easy now. Where we actually want to go is this way. So, I think it's... Is it right here? No, it's not here. I think actually we need to keep going this way. Um, oh god, is he really chasing me? Let's, let's hide in here for a second. Oh. Maybe actually just take him out. See, and I don't think he doesn't look like he can fit in here, but he just might. Either way, he can still hit us if we're not careful. Yeah. Let's take him out. Yeah. Okay, so now that I can stay calm, I think where I have to go is. Yeah, imminent fall. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> I think if we just walk forward, we'll be fine. Uh, okay, yeah, this part's not too bad. We see some crystal flakes. I like to aim for that little outcropping right there um, when we do this. And okay, Woo, hard part's over. Thought for sure I was gonna slip at least once. Again, like the main paths aren't too bad because they're just straight shots. But if you go in for that blue tight slab, good luck to you. Um, anyway, in here we're almost where we need to be. Uh, we're gonna find a new enemy. Uh, there are these like clam shell things, which I want to be a little careful of. Um, I'm gonna kill them off because next area we don't want them chasing us into them at least not the first time we're here so yeah, these guys will do some annoying attack like that and there's also more slapping attack so if you notice too this is uh, one of those enemies where their design kind of tells a story um, as you can see they got like this serrated mouth and a whole bunch of heads and one of their attacks you'll see is basically just a decapitation so all these guys have um, and all their skulls are just adventurers that they've managed to decapitate and yeah, they do drop Twinkling Titanite, as well as Purging Stones, which is kind of cool. Um, the Purging Stones are obviously because... Okay, okay, this is when these guys are really annoying, when you have to fight a crowd of them. Oh god. I might be dead. Oh, nope. Okay, survived. Let's see if I can get a heal off. Ah, so annoying. Here, have this. Doesn't even do that much. Um, yeah, so... In general, by the way, magic attacks are not going to be good in this whole area. Everything is very resistant to magic. You know, being magic, think like Pokemon. The water types are resistant to water, same fire, etc. If you don't watch, if you don't play Pokemon and you're watching this, um, sorry about that. But at the same time, like 
I'm just not, buddy. <laughs> okay, so let's clean those guys up. Um, I don't. He might be guarding an item, so let me just quickly take him out. He's not, so we could have ignored him. Really? Okay, so ah, this is kind of annoying because I'm out of Estus. And oh, doing the Titanite though. I'm out of Estus, and we're about to fight the boss. So maybe I'll be good. Maybe I won't die. Probably gonna die once, but all part of the fun, right? Anyway, over here. This is that crystal that Logan was telling us about. So yeah, Seath is onto us, of course. Um, he's going to chase us in here. Now, there's a cool little funny thing you can do where um, if he chases you, he'll actually shoot the laser beam into the thing. So we'll just get the trigger the attack and do that. And he just got the crystal. So now we can actually do damage to him. And if I'm quick here... Oh, I messed up. I think he's about to stop me. I do want to take out his tail because, as you can probably guess, like most enemies with tails, we do want to cut his off. Oh, nice. Okay. Normally that's a lot more annoying to get, but we just got the Moonlight Greatsword, which is awesome. And that might be a good trick to show that you can actually use humanity to heal yourself if you ever find yourself out of Estus. Um, now that, that we did the hard part, yeah, killing him for his tail, the best way to do that is sort of what we just did, where you uh, use that opportunity when um, you break the crystal and sort of be stunned as he's flailing around. But in general, this can be a tricky fight because it's very hard to get up on him if he unless until he doesn't attack. And oh boy, that's a direct hit. Does that hurt? Oh! Ah! All right, and he got me. Awesome. <laughs> well, expected that to happen. Came in without any Estus after all. But you know what? We got the sword, so I'm happy about that. Anyway, uh, now that we're back at the bonfire, let's uh, let's actually look at that sword real quick. This is uh, this is actually one of the better weapons in the game. Um, it does have a lot of intelligence requirement, but it's a cool weapon because um, if you're going for a for a magic build, right, you always got to use some weapon, and most magic builds are gonna like sort of prioritize the magic, and you end up just using a rinky dink weapon, right? Like a little straight sword or something like that. The Moonlight Great Sword is cool because if you wanna, if you're like me and you like great swords, you wanna be a mage. Well, there you go. <laughs> like Moonlight Great Sword will complement you very well. It scales very well with intelligence, and as well as I think it's got a unique strong attack. Um, I don't know if I'm gonna be able to use it. Yep. See, look. Shoot a laser. Really awesome. Uh, anytime your melee weapon shoots a projectile, it's going to use a lot of durability. Um, I think I showcased that with one of the weapons earlier. Either way, we've got a bit of a trek ahead of us to get back, so I'll meet you back there. Okay, here we are. Uh, we got more Estus than last time. And as you can see, we uh, there is a fog wall, so this time the clam things won't chase me in, which, oh god, oh god, oh god. It's a little sketchy, but once the fog wall is here, you can actually just sort of make your way in, no problem. And the annoying thing is, uh, it just starts the fight right away, so you're going to have to actually run around and make your way over to Seath scale, magic scale, before, you know, last time it started us there, so we could conveniently just hit it. Um, this time we're just going to smack it ourselves. We've got no time for him to shoot lasers at it. Uh... Now, yeah, so as you can see, he's got like a nice sort of 10 second animation there, which is your main opportunity to get the Moonlight Greatsword. Anyway, now that I have my uh, Estus, we're just going to do this like any other boss. Dodge the attacks, fight the War of Attrition, try not to get hit. Yep. There's going to be a lot of that with this fight, by the way. We're just, I'm aiming for the tail, one of his things. I don't even know what you want to call these. 
of his tails, <laughs> I guess. And then it just pulls it away at the last second. Uh, oh, another thing to point out. As you can tell, uh, the upper half of him looks like a conventional dragon. Maybe a little crystalline, whereas this lower half is just... Ooh, my souls. Forget about those. This, this lower half is, of course, just some gross tentacle monster. Ah! Which makes you think, right? Um, and this is... Uh, my, a friend pointed this out to me, which I think even he found it on Reddit or something. Oh god. It's gonna pound it. But, you know, Seed the Scalus is his, like, nickname. That, like, all the dragons give him, I think. But you would think, like, a more fitting nickname would be, like, Seed the tentacle monster <laughs> or something because the thing is other dragons do not look like this right they they're like you know upper half kind of looks like that but then the lower half is what you would expect a dragon to look like legs and a tail and the thing is like you know this this isn't the result of him doing it to himself with his like magical experiments and all like in the opening cutscene when he was like a normal dragon ah, no. Actually, I didn't hurt too much. Yeah, he, he looked like this, if you looked carefully. He, uh... So, for whatever reason, I don't know... His, his mommy dragon must have been... Drinking a few... A bit too much Estus when she was pregnant. Although I guess... now dragons would lay eggs, right? I mean, maybe. I don't, I don't know if you ever find a dragon egg, so... Probably no Dark Souls dragons at birth. Uh... <laughs> anyway... Before, rather than speculate on why he looks like this, let's just put him out of his misery. Okay. Ooh, I got two hits in there, nice. Yeah, I don't know why I always like to look up to him. I think it's to sort of see if the projectile attacks are coming. But yeah, the trick is, rather than just spend just all your time chasing one of these tentacles, you want to like bait out an attack, that way he's stuck in the animation, and then go for into the kill. Nope. And his roars do kind of telegraph which attack is coming. Like, there's one roar in particular, which is going to sound... I think it's that one. Nope, not this one. Actually, I think we can just kill him. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, his death animation is going to move us around a bit. But anyway, that's it for Seath. We got him. That's what you get. You went for immortality, but we got you instead. So there we go, we get our bequeathed Lord Soul Shard, which is essentially the uh, the piece of Gwyn which we were taking back from him, getting ourselves a nice chunky amount of souls. And it even puts a bonfire for us, which um, is mainly just here for us to teleport out. So that's exactly what we're going to do. We're done with the Duke's Archives, we're done with the Crystal Caves, we're done with the magic part of the game. <laughs> which, I don't know if it's been obvious, but um, I'm not... Magic is not my favorite part of Dark Souls, we'll say. <laughs> so I'm very glad to be behind this. So let's, uh... Before we level up... Uh, let's warp back to Firelink Shrine. I believe, uh... Siegland is going to be there for us to talk to. Might be wrong. She might not be there. Oh no, she is. Let's see what she's got to say. Oh, that's not talk. That's rest. This is talk. We're both managing quite well, aren't we? But I haven't found my father yet. Have you seen him? Really? Then I must be off. I'm sorry he's caused you trouble. He has a knack for that. If you just stay put. Yeah, so she's gonna go off to find Sealand. Uh, I mean, Seymour. Really? I'm so yeah, and she's apologizing for him, but, you know, as far as I'm concerned, he's, uh... I think we've enjoyed helping him, right? at least I have. Right? Have you guys as well? <laughs> Either way, he's a funny character, so no no harm done, Siegland. Hopefully she can reunite with him. Uh, let's level up. Now, okay, the thing is, I said we're done with the dirt, with the whole magic area, but uh, we technically do have to go back for one more thing. But I'm not going to do that until we are... Uh... Actually, can I just go there now? Sorry, no, I'm trying to wrap up the episode here. But... <laughs> I'll check one more thing. So the thing is that we, before we're truly done with the area, this area, we're gonna have to buy out all of Big Hat's stuff in order to trigger his final event. Um, the only sort of problem with that is he sells a lot of things and a lot of expensive things at that. Oh, hello there. Where have you been? Time is a resource. Let's delve in promptly. Um, because as you can see, 
he uh, his soul spells. This one in particular is 50,000, so... <laughs> I don't know if that's the wisest use of our souls yet. Um, once we're sort of like at the final, final part of the game, we're going to have a few options for grinding souls, as well as have some items for making that easier. So I think we're going to save that for then. I'm glad we can just teleport here and knock that out whenever we need to. I um, wonder if he has anything to say now that we killed Seath. The tomes stored in these archives are truly magnificent. A great pool of knowledge. The fruits of superior wisdom and an unquenchable desire for the truth. Some would say Seath had an unsound fixation. But his work is a beautiful, invaluable resource. All progress demands sacrifice. And I certainly bear no antipathy for that wonderful scale piece. Okay, I don't think he's going to say anything in particular. Maybe one more try. Well, I don't know. I don't remember how you were. I can't remember the death of the undead. Um, where's it going? What's the other one? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Um, okay, so glad he actually said that there, because um, you know, spending all your days and all your time just reading the uh, the books of a madman who Seath was mad, by the way. I don't know if that was made clear, but he's kind of gone insane. It's gonna it's gonna have an effect on your health, you know, kind of like good old H.P. Lovecraft, Eldritch kind of reading insanity will break your mind, kind of thing. And he's just gonna babble on, so we'll let him babble. Um, he'll still sell us stuff. Um, let me uh, let me spend these souls and then we'll we'll call it a day. We'll, uh, we'll where are we going next? We are going. Oh yeah, we're gonna be going to the demon ruins next. Which okay, why can't I rest? Uh, there must be an enemy nearby. Okay, you know what? I'm just gonna use my homeward bone, which I think will take me back to Firelink Shrine. Yeah. Okay. Good. Gonna have to buy some more homeward bones between episodes as well. There's a few merchants we can go to. So let's see. Let's get our intelligence up to 20. Yeah. Okay. So we actually have the requirements we need for that special weapon that I keep hinting about. So yeah, if you know the weapon, you it's probably pretty obvious what it's gonna be at this point. Um, if you don't, like it's this is your first time watching Dark Souls, then you know, you'll be in for a treat. But uh, for now on, I'm gonna put. Actually, swing back to some of our basics. Gonna level up endurance and vitality a lot more next. Maybe even a bit more entombment. And once those are at the point, we're gonna dump our final, final levels into just cranking up intelligence and faith. Since those are both what's gonna scale into that weapon. So, guys, that is it. We are back here. We're at Firelink Shrine. The source of all locations in Dark Souls. And we're gonna call it an episode here. And as always, guys, you know the drill. You know what I'm about to say. I hope you enjoyed the episode. You know that I enjoyed making it, and I'll see you next time. Take care.